Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Dauntless. In today's video, we're going to be maxing out the Warpike. Double XP weekend has treated me very well and to the point where I was able to get quite a few reforges on the Warpike as well as a few on the Hammer, which appears to be the latest uh, vote for the uh, next legendary weapon set. So the Hammer is up next. That being said, we are richer than we've ever been. We have a ton of rams, and you might have seen that down here. I've done all my resistances. I've gotten a lot done. I'm, I, this weekend treated me very well. Uh, I got all this maxed, all that maxed. We got almost all of these. Got all the resistances, all the mods as well as all of the consumable gathering uh the pylons will probably be pretty close to last but everything else honestly is just fluff right it's just the weapon prestiges that are really left and then the cosmetic crowns which is gonna just take some time right you need five of these it takes several months to finish getting all of these cosmetic crowns but uh eventually we'll be up to the task you have a few bounties to claim so we'll go ahead and kick that off I've been having uh, this problem where I have a ton of keys, but not enough time to really just like run around and gather all of them. So I'm sitting on about 55 bounty tokens. Hopefully that's enough. And we're going to go ahead and head over to Iron Falls. This is where I like to grind, honestly. Uh, I just like this map. Um, it has a lot of terror behemoths and it works well with the Malcarian weapon. So that's typically where I go to start off. Speaking of quick chess, I typically will... Once I arrive here, I'll just go here. Then I'll check this spot down here. And I'll fight this cool shot too. Quick two chests there. Sometimes there's one right next to that broken tree off in the distance. Um, we are using Savage or Wellspring, which is something I haven't been using a lot of, but I'm trying to get used to using it more. Um, I don't know what it is, but something about using things like Mighty Landbreaker and Savage Wellspring. They just don't click with me very well, and I don't really know why, other than it's just like I build it up, and then it's I just haven't really figured out a good time to just cast it where it's like a little bit more fluid. Should probably just do it instead of thinking about it, but I don't know. It just doesn't feel as fluid as I'd like it to be, I guess. It doesn't feel uh, very intuitive. It'd be cool if you could... Um, it doesn't feel like it flows into uh, the animation very well. And it would be cool if the move itself, like pressing Q, actually did a little bit of damage when you did Savage Wellspring. That way it doesn't feel like you're just like stopping everything that you're doing. Um, just kind of like a random thought. It doesn't need to be like that, you know, it's not, it doesn't, it's not making or breaking it, but I just, it just feels like there's a slight disconnect every time you cast Savage Wellspring. And, that's, I guess I'm just pointing that out. Got another chest over here. Gonna go ahead and fight a quill shot again. Yeah, the double XP weekend was uh, quite huge for me. I managed to get several reforges on top of uh, getting several like hunt passes done, which gave me a ton of aether sparks, which allows me to get more a uh, aether hearts. And so I'm sitting on a surplus of about 12 aether hearts, maybe more now. Um, and I still have extra aether sparks for just like normal reforges as well. So as my weapons level up, I'm going to be able to, uh, handle that pretty much immediately. And that was something that was actually stopping my progress quite a bit since the last time I went super hard um speaking of going super hard I just I I've just been playing a lot more Dauntless lately it's just um you know double EXP weekend was enough of a motivator but I I just found myself like having legitimate fun um with some of the weapons so uh even even just going back I was I was breaking off some of the rust playing the hammer um hammer is my worst weapon by far like I I played it the least i'm awful with it and that's just really <laughs> that's just it like that that is everything that you need to know about that 
uh, I don't really play the hammer that much. And I was breaking off the rust. And I was like, wow, this weapon feels a lot different than when I remember it. Uh, some, some good, some bad. And I'll get a little bit more into that as I, you know, am reforging that weapon. But, um, overall, I'm, I'm actually pretty, pretty excited to pick that weapon back up too. It's interesting how I don't really have like much recollection of how certain weapons play and then I go back and play these like refreshes and stuff and they end up playing relatively well. The hammer has been through so many iterations. It's actually crazy throughout the development of of Dauntless. I have the hiccups now, that's not good. But yeah, the, the hammer has just seen so many iterations, so many like bug fixes, <laughs> some better, uh, some some for worse. But uh, I mean, way back, it was like one of the only weapons that could stagger, right? Like damage like wound and stagger damage were unique to the weapons and uh you know now everything can deal stagger damage and even more weapons can wound dauntless has changed a lot over time it's very uh it's very cool to see the transformation of the game makes you wonder like <laughs> how come we didn't have this sooner or how come we didn't do this sooner um i'm all for honestly like i'm i'm all for like weapons having unique properties like you know war pike being the only one that can wound or something like that but it needs to be like substantial and i'm i'm all for like weapons having that level of identity um makes sense that the hammer you know it was the only one that could do stagger damage but uh i mean hammer and thinking about it the hammer couldn't cut tails for a while um, you know, it was like sharp damage and, and blunt damage. And those were, those damage types were different and you, yeah, the hammer wasn't able to like cut tails, but now it has Aether Slam, which is special, special slicing damage. So, um, which is a little bit different. There's a lot of different damage types in, uh, Dauntless that you might not, like a new player might not know about. Like there's obviously blunt and, and, um, or there's like obviously like stagger damage there's wound damage there's part damage uh there's just like the white numbers which is like just core damage like doing uh essentially like just like raw damage numbers um it doesn't go towards like a part break or a wound or anything like that it's just raw behemoth health damage um but there's also like types that go beyond that so it's like the sword does slicing damage and the hammer does um you know, like a blunt damage, which is better against things like Skarn's armor and um, slicing damage is, deals additional damage to the tails and stuff. Um, but there's special slicing damage, which is kind of just like, even though the hammer has that, uh, the eighth, things like Aether Slam, the shock waves from the Aether Slam deal special slicing, which is able to cut tails and stuff like that. But eventually they made it just so the hammer can also break tails and do stuff like that. But, um, there's also item damage, which is non-scaled by, uh, like the calculation's a little bit different. It doesn't scale off of like your cells and all that. So you see that from damage numbers, like um, your lantern or grenades or something like that. So that's considered item damage. Um, just like some, just kind of rattling off some trivia and fun facts. This stuff doesn't, it's funny how like little this, it, it matters a lot, but it's funny how little it's like explained to the player. So um, yeah, it's kind of random, kind of random to talk about in a video like this, but that's, eh, well, random, <laughs> random discussion is kind of just the name of the game with stuff like this, uh, with random just slaying general slaying having a good time been uh playing a lot of dauntless recently and i've been thinking about uh just kind of how the game is explained to players and a lot, i've been playing with a lot of new newer players and the information filling in the gaps that they don't know and it's just been an interesting time so we'll go ahead and hit some of these bounties here let's drop some new ones i need to wait for them to enrage and then start wounding Suppose one wound when it's enraged. Chopping sticks. We're getting good luck on these uh Terror Shock Behemoths. Yeah, that was a that was a really lucky draft. That was really good. 
we should be able to i'm level five i'm just gonna move let's just move fortune's folly we already know what's up i was asked by a friend recently like how i got my username and they were like oh you know uh you you must be like a black lagoon fan you know revy revy's so cool um and uh i was just like uh yeah no black lagoon is sweet but that's not how i got my username um uh my name was actually revy for quite some time before i even knew black lagoon was a thing um i am i kind of grew up on anime I, I think i said this last time during the uh chain blades uh version of this video i i watch anime but i kind of like fell off of it uh pretty hard uh as i got older uh i grew up on it like watching like Dunami and all that uh, like adult swim and stuff um but i wasn't introduced to black lagoon until like well after i was in in college and uh like my early 20s and that's kind of like when i started watching like the most anime i think was like my early 20s and uh i actually my my username uh well it originated from world of warcraft which i started playing when i was like 16 uh or like 15 i was 15 when the beta started 16 like when uh the vanilla servers went up and so i was like a junior in high school or something like that and um i was actually listening to a album at the time called say hello to sunshine which is a finch album um which is like an emo band <laughs> that i listened to like since like middle school uh they're i can't really describe their sound because so say hello to sunshine was such a departure from like the emo they went like f almost like post hardcore alternative rock like uh borderline like almost like some metal aspects and um and I guess it, it, it was just like some weird hodgepodge of like screamo post hardcore and uh alternative rock that uh also has a little bit of metal and uh uh metal dabblings I suppose but um they have a song called revelation song and i was listening to it as i was making my druid in world of warcraft and so i was just like oh i'll just name them revelation and then like my guildmates at the time were just like oh are you like super religious or something uh, like book revelations or something and i was just like no nope, just it's just the name of the song and uh and that like kind of kicked off a tradition of just naming my characters after songs um off of albums i'm listening to at the time and it helps me document like the times in my life of like what music i was listening to during what game i was playing and yeah uh it's so revelation song uh say hello to sunshine is a great great album i still go back and listen to it actually to this day uh occasionally like when i think about it like moments like this um there's a song on it called reduced to teeth and um that's my favorite songs and that's on spotify so if you guys want to like see what i was listening to when i was uh younger and even to this day uh yeah check out reduced to teeth um and if you like that song then check out the rest of the album you can let me know if my music is trash or not that'll be funny leave a, leave a comment if you listen to reduced to teeth and let me know what you think of it yeah music's been a uh, a very large portion of like my life growing up i a lot of my music uh, it sounds corny but like when i was younger like music was like my therapy type of type of thing uh i always love like discovering new bands off of like myspace or like bands that are just getting started and they're like showing up and they have like their own myspace page and um man i can i can still think of bands that just don't exist anymore and they like stopped making music around those days that i would just be like man i wish you guys kept making music um yeah i <laughs> i'm i'm taking a, my own trip down memory lane right now but yeah uh music was just a very large portion of my childhood and i guess like as i was gaming i was discovering new music you know so it, like gaming and music go so like closely together for me but uh while i'm making content i don't really listen to anything i i can hear my own voice when i'm talking but uh just to make sure you know my audio levels are good but other than that it's like there's a music is very much so like something for me when i'm not working uh which i kind of like that disconnect honestly
uh, you know, when I'm just recreationally gaming, uh, I'm, you know, I'll listen to music, I'll throw something on, or if I'm, like, farming offline, um, I'll throw something on, um, but typically, like, while I'm streaming, my music is very low on my end, so I, you know, it just doesn't distract me that much, but, uh, yeah. Very much so a musically inclined person. I used to go to shows all the time when I was, um, I would... <laughs> My parents don't know this, but I would actually skip school sometimes to go to a concert, but uh, I don't think they watch my content, nor will they, you know, it's kind of kind of too late for... Kind of too late for all that, but, uh... <laughs> yeah, they, uh, I used to, I used to go to a lot of concerts and go out, go out, take the train, go to the city, and uh, go see some of my favorite bands, and... Times have changed. Times have changed a lot. I don't know if I would want to go to um, too many concerts these days, you know? It's just a lot of people. Uh, and the world's just getting kind of crazy, you know? Also a lot older, you know? Can't really like go in the mosh pit and not expect to be like super sore in the, <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Unlike when I was, uh, when I was a kid. I have a, I have a very, uh, interesting story about, like, crowd surfing, uh, during, I, it was, this isn't a, a tour anymore, but Warp Tour, um, I don't even remember what year it was, but my first time ever crowd surfing, someone threw my legs over my head, I'm, you know, I'm a, I was a tiny, scrawny high school kid, and uh this really big guy like pretty much just like threw me up and he was just like uh i actually remember it was two guys um and they were just like this guy and i was like uh and then i just like turn around and these and and they're just like yep this guy and then they just lift me up <laughs> and i was just like all right well i guess this is the thing now and then uh this was during uh Another emo band that isn't a thing anymore is uh, Scaring Kids, Scaring Scary Kids, Scaring Kids is the name of uh, was the name of the band. And my first time ever crowd surfing, I just I'm next thing I know my my head is underneath my legs, and they, I just did, basically did like a backflip. But people were carrying me while I was doing it. It was very strange. It was a very strange experience. Um, I ended up falling. I, like people just eventually just like stopped carrying me, and then I just kind of fell. Um, I didn't hurt myself or anything, but I felt really bad because I assume that like after that happened I probably kicked a few people just because I was like trying to regain my balance and Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't really like I like moshing and going into like the crowds and, and doing that type of stuff like crowd surfing doesn't bother me um, I also just don't want to hurt anyone like everybody's there to have a good time, you know so uh, doing all that stuff uh, someone typically gets hurt, so I try not to do that, uh, as much, nor would I probably really want to at my age anymore, but, um, who knows? It's been a while since I've gone to a concert. I think the last concert I went to was, uh, I actually saw The Midnight with, uh, January Non, who is another Dauntless, uh, partner. Uh, they were playing, uh... I saw that there were pretty cheap concert tickets, and so we went, but that was like a sit-down show, and they're more like a synth, synth wave, like rock band. Uh, the Midnight's a really good band, too, but, um, before that, I think I, I saw Muse when, uh, I saw Muse when Drones went live, like when they, uh, when the album Drones came out. I forget what year that is, but I mean, I could check. <clears throat> but if you're a Muse fan, you probably know when that is. Uh, while I do like uh, Muse's music, I'm, I I didn't really expect to see them, but um, my girlfriend at the time like really enjoys Muse, so we uh, we went to go see them. And that was like the last rock concert I've been to. It's It's funny how like... <laughs> My interests over the years have like just completely almost like it feels like diminished um like going to concerts and watching anime have been were like a, a thing that i did in you know early college and in high school and stuff but uh yeah 
now 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 i think more so than ever i want to be like involved in music in a in a more substantial way like making my own music rather than like obviously gaining inspiration from the artists that i love but um the internet has kind of made it so like you know i can just listen to my music at, you know i don't have to like download the i don't have to like pirate the music and then put it on a burned cd anymore it's just like you just load up spotify or load up youtube and listen to it it's it's an entirely different beast it's an entirely different beast but uh i don't really uh i'll, I'll be honest i don't really miss burning cds and spending money on that type of stuff or like I, I prefer having all my my stuff like just on my phone or on my PC. It's a lot more convenient. If I'm being honest. <laughs> Though I do think that um like vinyl, like it is kind of sad what's happening to the vinyl industry. Uh like records are just kind of like so obsolete that like people aren't people don't buy them anymore, but it's like they're so there's such like a cool piece, like a cool like memorabilia. Um, a cool piece of memorabilia and to the point where it's like yeah I don't know it's just like uh, it's like a really cool piece of art like a lot of game uh, OSTs get put on vinyl and they're sold as like collector's items which I think is like honestly the coolest there are two things that like two things of like I'm not a big collector but if I was a collector it'd be vinyl and it would be skateboard decks and yeah, I think that the, those two things are just kind of like the coolest thing to have like around your house, <laughs> like on your walls and like expensive art. Yeah, that's cool. But like, do you have expensive art on a skateboard deck <laughs> that's hung up on the wall? I, I don't know. I just think that's like a, a cool thing. Kind of random, but that is uh, that's what I would have around my house if I had a house an event going on here this ye old slice and dice we got uh this is the one with uh two caramax at the end very simple to be honest i haven't really been paying it too much attention to my bounties we might be here for a while but i'm expecting probably like you know the the normal time around like an hour 10 minutes to an hour and 30 um of uh reforge time tend to just kind of zone out and forget to do bounties or even draft them apparently <laughs> do pardon the interruption just got too lost in what i was talking about um okay we got i need mortal wounds so be going for maximum wounds I need to wound the tail. Yep. Okay, that got wounded in like three hits. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, we were talking about my like my username or something, or like how I got my username. But yeah, a lot of people think it's just like um, it has to do with uh, Black Lagoon, which uh, Black Lagoon's great. But yeah, I I typically try not to like name myself after like other characters, just because I think it gets really confusing. Uh, I don't want to say like I try to keep things original because I definitely don't <laughs> you know I'm like you know I just literally named myself after a song but um yeah I, I don't know there I just uh try not to I try to like make it as much of my own as I can I guess you know without just like hard copying a name uh you know i like i would want to be as original as possible uh but it, not that it's like very easy to do these days there's just so many forms of media with all the and everything has a name and it's like there's always some overlap and some something is always like you know relatively like you know quote like borrowed from it at least so it's just hard to do it's hard you know you can't really be original anymore 
There's always something about something, you know, you always drew inspiration from something these days. Regardless of how old it is, so. Almost level 10. Um, I think we'll hit level 10 and then head on over to Hades Reach and that's when it's gonna slow down again. But we need interrupts, so, and everything's dying too quick, so. Luckily, we're getting a lot of wounds. And just good general bounty uh, farm. So that's like keeping us swift. You know, it's keeping it swift. We're leveling up quickly and uh, we'll be able to move on to other hunting grounds. That's my bad. I missed that interrupt. I haven't used discipline like once. I don't think this entire video. Just been too caught up in everything. Um, I'll take the time to say uh, I hope you guys are having a good like holiday season, having a safe holiday season. Uh, it's been several years, um, and one thing that I haven't really done is like make like a like a Christmas special. I think the first year that I was doing content creation, they did like um, they did like oh the debut of like hunt passes. And those hunt passes were Christmas themed and I made like a kind of like a Christmas themed like hunt pass video like showing off all the cosmetics and and like how the hunt passes work and at the end of the day it was just a battle pass video which was kind of cringe but uh I just remember like I haven't really done anything to like really uh celebrate I'm not a big like holiday person you know like I celebrate the stuff that my family wants to celebrate and I'll celebrate it with them. But I've never been someone that just like goes out of their way to like, you know, I don't go out of my way to like look at Christmas lights. I don't, you know, dress up for Halloween anymore. And I think that stuff just kind of goes with age, but like, yeah, I've just been, I mean, shit, I don't really like celebrate birthdays anymore. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, holidays have just been like, uh, I don't know. I'm, they're not a hassle like I just don't I just don't do them you know I'm busy I'm doing other stuff I don't have time to like just go put Christmas lights up or like I don't even have my own place to do it but like even if I did I don't think I would you know like you can't really do that with an apartment anyway so when I was um I had my own apartment like years ago it was like yeah I just never decorated I didn't own any stuff like that I don't know I wonder if that's more of like a, an anomaly thing or is that more normal? I imagine it's more normal for, um, you know, like <laughs> college students, like when I, and stuff like that, but I don't know. I'm curious. Do you guys celebrate? Like, do you guys celebrate holidays and stuff? Or do you, uh, typically just kind of like, are you guys uh, like me and Scrooge? Because I don't know. Everything is just so. It's so contrived, it feels, you know, like the holiday spirit is like, oh, you know, it's the giving season and you know, it's like, so you're just trying to sell stuff, right? Like, that's what it feels like. And and I think that those, it, everything just feels like um, Valentine's Day, birthday, well, maybe not necessarily birthdays. I think celebrating your life and, and your friends' lives are, is like super important and something that should be done but like let's say like valentine's day christmas halloween like a lot of it's just like a lot of it is just about spending money at the end of the day you know buying candy buying costumes and i doubt it was always like that and maybe this is just like an american thing but um that's just kind of like what it feels like and so i choose not to participate in it i guess it's like, <laughs> I, and yeah, I don't, may, maybe that's just me being telling and, you know, I just don't have a lot of money to do all that type of stuff. I don't have the, the extra funds to really like afford going out and doing all that. So I don't know. I'm curious. I'm curious to hear what you guys uh, choose to celebrate. Okay, so we finished Mortal Wounds, and that should put us at, yeah, well into level 10, so we'll go ahead and head on over to 
Do do do. We'll go to Hades Reach. All right, where are we starting? First off, we get these chests, right? Chest number one. Collected. Five Aether Sparks. 1,500 Rams. Chest number two. Got a bounty token there. That's huge. We love bounty tokens here. And then we go over here, and that chest's not there. So, um... We are closest to Quillshot, and then we'll go to Skarn, because Skarn will be a quick kill. Skarn's level 18. This one's level 17, so it's... Kills are expected to be a little bit longer. Got a really nice Savit UE on uh, Quill Shot here, so that's gonna keep time down. Gonna try and rage again here, which is cool. We still are rocking Savagery, so we can uh, go for wounds as they show up, and then use our Savage Wellspring to attack the legs and just get maximal wound damage as well as maximal uh, value from our savagery and honestly it's gonna be a pretty smooth kill take some time to get a second wellspring here gonna try to be a little bit smarter about using it need to draft another one we'll do act your rage it should be relatively easy since the behemoths are a little bit higher level than us but going back on uh what i was talking about for like the holidays uh i don't really like do any like holiday you know holiday specials anymore right and um but uh i was recently hit up by uh the pike of destiny who is a amazing dauntless player one of the best if not the best uh dauntless player that i that i'm aware of you know, there's a handful of Dauntless veterans that have just been playing and playing and playing, and they they just love the game. And Pike's definitely one of those people. And uh, you should definitely check out his <laughs> check out his streams on YouTube because uh, he always streams his like trials runs and has uh, stuff to say and in has interesting strategies for uh, you know conquering. He's always the one that's like he's trying to like shake up the meta in a way that's like interesting. And he's just like, oh, I, a very curious individual. He's like, oh man, I wonder if like Reckless will leave, you know. Oh, Bastion. And yeah, uh, anyway, it's, uh, he hit me up and he's just like, hey, there's some changes coming in the next patch around Christmas. Uh, you know, do you want to make a video on it? I'm like, hell yeah, so let's do that. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, I fare playing with uh, someone of his caliber, but I am up to the task, you know? Who am I to deny the content, you know? Who am I? I'm simply a vessel. I bring the content. Uh, but that'll be a lot of fun. And so I think I'll upload that on Christmas and that'll be like a, kind of like our, our Christmas special. So uh, please look forward to that. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I've been wanting to do more with like the Dauntless community, at least just like, you know, giving giving credit where credit is due. You know, there's a, t I mean, there's a ton of creators that have put in work. Um, and even when I like go back and look at my own uh, content, I just cringe at how like inefficient and how poorly edited and just all that stuff. I don't, but like there are people that like put in legitimate hard work and, and learned new skills to like get the information out there for the, uh, the, you know, the Dauntless community and those people. And I mean, there are people that are just been, that have been playing for a long time that are still top players. Um, that and i can think of a few off the top of my head but i would love to just like talk to them or like you know hear their opinions or like what is their advice for like new players um in the future you know or like for future new players like even if they don't play anymore it's just like they they have enough like we've been playing this game for so long that that legacy knowledge is still relevant at least up until you know the next summer the summer patch or whatever and then everything's probably going to get shaken up again, but it's going to get solved as well. You know, I'm sure a lot of a lot of them will come back for that patch just to check it out and solve everything and then just be like, oh, yep, we're bored again. You know, we figured out everything. We're bored. We'll go play something else, but 
I look forward to that. I'm curious to see if, you know, if Dauntless will have a legitimate renaissance, you know? If there will be a Dauntless renaissance period or, uh, you know, maybe it could do the opposite. It could be overhyped um, and it could be fun for about a week and, you know, and then people get bored. But I, based on what I've seen and what they're presenting, I don't think that'll be the case. I think it will be a good fun for a while. And, uh, I mean, it's just hard to beat. It's hard to beat the power of free. I've been getting, uh, <laughs> this one, co uh, viewer has been commenting pretty much every time that I bring up Monster Hunter World, like, almost every time I do one of these videos, pretty much like every video, uh, I end up talking about Monster Hunter. Uh, I always talk about Monster Hunter World and doing a playthrough, and here it is again. Uh, that... My, uh, my, like, other game content is on its way. Um, I want to take the time to get ample Dauntless content up before I start making, like, content for other games. Um, because these, these videos aren't, like, something that get uploaded, like, the moment that they're done. I always, like, try to schedule them. And, uh, I'm, I'm trying to do, like, a new, uh, upload schedule. I want to do three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's always been kind of, like, my goal. Uh, but since my, just all, all the things that have gone, uh, down over the past couple of years, it's been really hard for me to maintain a schedule. But now that I'm, like, kind of back in the swing of things with Dauntless and, uh, in general, just content creation, I feel like I am more, um, more... Uh, able to be consistent on YouTube. I'm getting bodied by this thing. Um, I think uh, that's what I'm going to be doing is like three videos a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's the goal. So uh, look forward to that. But yeah, Monster Hunter will be on the channel eventually. Uh, I definitely want to catch the, uh, the hype wave of... You know, Monster Hunter Wilds being announced, and, you know, I've been playing Monster Hunter now for several months now. Dude, a high-level quill shot is not it. I'm just gonna let it enrage, like... <laughs> I keep getting hit by quills. Anyway, um, yeah, Monster Hunter content is coming, I just... Need time to create it, and yeah, I'll do a I'll do a playthrough. I need to decide what weapon I'm going to be playing in the playthrough because I really enjoy um, long sword, great sword, sword and shield. Um, I'm not really good at any other weapon except for maybe like dual blades, but I feel like dual blades isn't super interesting. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll do great sword. Maybe I'll do a great sword playthrough. That'd be pretty cool. I don't know. I, I feel like Greatsword is more of those, like, people that play the Greatsword are, like, really interested in Greatsword gameplay, but, um, I wonder how the rest of the Monster Hunter community views, like, Greatsword, especially after Rise, um, uh, yeah, Rise, where I feel like a lot more people picked up the Greatsword just because of how strong it was, uh, with the way that, like, the counters worked in Sunbreak. Um, but in Monster Hunter World, it's a little bit different, right? You don't have all the wire bugs and all that i'm curious to see what people think of it uh or and whether or not they would find it entertaining to watch like that's that's the main thing like that's why it's funny that longsword gets like oh yeah you know it's just oh another longsword player you know it's like the most popular weapon and it's like well it looks cool <laughs> you know like it looks cool to uh it's more of a spectacle but uh landing true charge slash is also like very it feels it feels good when it does land and i feel like more than any other uh you know you have to have like a huge brain for like a good great sword player can like big brain the the crap out of like some some fights and uh like figure out how to you know how am i gonna get this huge attack off in time to you know and make it work and it really adds for like that level of creativity that i really miss from dauntless there's just all the, you know, like, aerial greatsword, um, it, like, comes to mind. It's not the strongest, but it's, like, funny, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, everything is so, um, I don't want to say arbitrary, but um, that's what I'm gonna say. Is like, Dauntless's builds are so arbitrary. 
it doesn't make for like everything is very predictable and cut and dry and just flat i guess is the best way to describe it the only thing that uh i would say is like kind of shaken up in recent time is the what is it tempest tempest builds with all the move speed stuff but it's like <laughs> every tempest build is it feels is is the same as well right it's not like unique to a particular weapon like every weapon can run the uh the move speed builds that just deal they just shit damage you know so i don't know um but like aerial great sword is like you know you just <laughs> keep jumping on a ledge and i don't know it's it it's more interesting i guess this is gonna be hell dude an event at level 18 with level 18 behemoths when i'm level 12 i don't know what i'm thinking well actually i do know what i'm thinking now i'm gonna use my potions pop this i'm gonna just try and kill skarn as fast as possible i'm gonna try and have quill shot help me with uh it's quills oh that's fine actually i'll get this ko okay i can't see anything great camera angle head attack that's fine and it's already dead chalk proc yeah popping potions definitely helped I'm fine with it, like, trying to enrage as long as I don't get shot. Okay, well, got shot. Okay, that wasn't too bad, honestly. It wasn't too bad. I'll be, uh, I'll be straight up. You won't know it, but it's been several hours into the future. I, uh, realized that I was like, man, my l head is getting, like, really lightheaded, and I'm gonna go ahead and just, like, take a break and come back and i realized that i hadn't eaten in quite some time so i was just like oh yeah i should probably do that so <laughs> so we're back and uh we're back on hades reach we're back uh farming again I got care back here pretty close i'm gonna go ahead and get this box need to reacquaint myself with what we're doing here we got interrupts we got stagger behemoth after it's enraged and then the rest is just wounds and stuff so <clears throat> should be pretty simple here i'm gonna get this break got the wound as we do yeah i took a break uh i ate some uh I had some broccoli and beef for dinner. I don't eat beef too frequently, but uh, it's a nice little treat whenever I do. It's already enraged. I can get the stagger here and finish a bounty. Go for some more wound damage. Get the kill. Go ahead and turn that in. Um, yeah, I don't eat a lot of beef. My preferred meat is like chicken and fish um mainly chicken but i went ahead and had some dinner went on a walk you know got some fresh air opened up the window in the office so there's some fresh air in here as well had a little bit of ice cream after dinner neapolitan ice cream neapolitan is my favorite ice cream comment your favorite ice cream flavor down below if you uh made it this far in the video and uh yeah I'm feeling a lot better now, so uh, I think this, uh, it's gonna be curtains here for this last prestige. You know, I was thinking, you know, what's the worst that can happen when I go fight Balamir? And then I was just like, you know, how about we just don't? How about we just don't? I was just like, ah, oh, you know, it's, it's fine. It's Valamir. It's Valamir. We got this. We did not have this. And by we, I mean I. And by me, I, I 
I don't know. I didn't have it. <laughs> I did not have it. But yeah, I went on a walk, played a little bit of Monster Hunter now, you know, as you do. Bought a few monsters. They just released um, Dual Blades and the Lance in that game. And I am working on a video that has to do with uh, Zenogre. If you guys are familiar with Zenogre, he's pretty, uh, pretty popular monster. You know, he's kind of. I would say he's probably the most popular. Actually, he's one of, he's one of the fan favorites for sure. <clears throat> uh, it's a giant electric puppy dog, and they just put him in the game for the uh it's called fulminations and the frost events but you can only fight him once and he's weak to ice and i took a lot of time to craft a lot of ice weapons today for a video i'm working on but yeah pretty easy hellion kill let's see we need interrupts and we need more wound damage Gonna go ahead and draft another one. Break four parts while payments are enraged. Can do that easy peasy. Go ahead and pop the Alcarian legendary ability to get over to Skarn faster. I've been getting a uh, a comment that pops up pretty frequently. <laughs> And it's such a common, uh, it's such a common, like, question that I got when I was streaming early on, early on, like, what's the best weapon in Dauntless? And the truth is, is a lot of, I mean, at least at, like, general levels of play, every weapon is, like, pretty comparable. Um, but I will say that a, there are two weapons that kind of stay below the others and that's typically the chain blades and the axe that hit me and that makes me so sad um yeah it's typically like typically the chain blades and the axe are the ones that stay slightly behind and the axe just has like too much ramp right like once it has determination four it's a little bit you know less of a gap if at all it quickly like but in uh because the rate that behemoths die a ramp weapon doesn't really work that well in dauntless um if you look at like the trials boards you can see that most of them like most of the top speed runs are always like <laughs> they're almost always like below 30 seconds sometimes depends on the trial obviously but uh it, for the most part it's like i'll say they're usually under like one minute right depends how they're being ran depends what the build is and all that stuff but um on the high end it's usually under a minute so i just kind of wanted to address that like all the other weapon like everything is comparable and, and and relatively good and it doesn't really matter what weapon you pick whichever one you enjoy is like the weapon that you should play <clears throat> but yeah um it was aether strikers for a while it was hammer for a while it was repeaters for a while and now it, it, for me it's like i don't even know <laughs> i don't even know where the where it's skewed for the best weapon but or for like the number one top pick most you know most busted but it was aether strikers for a very long time and they're still good but i'm pretty sure they got like a slight nerf recently not well not recently but at some point in time when i wasn't as active just based on what i've seen and heard but i wouldn't take my uh anything i say about what's the what's the best weapon as as gospel because i just haven't i'm i just, <laughs> frankly i don't really care like all of the weapons are like i said pretty comparable so just play what you think is fun But my favorite weapon, uh, honestly, lately, it it was the axe. Like the 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 axe is my favorite weapon, I, and I think it probably still is. I just I, now that I've been playing other weapons, I don't know. Been having the most fun probably with chain blades. 
have a soft spot for the the sword obviously but uh we'll see maybe maybe i'm suddenly a hammer player after this next uh after this next week it's tough to say I wonder how many Hellions I've killed over the course of like the last uh, couple months where I've been playing Dauntless uh, sporadically. <clears throat> I just wonder how, and like how many behemoths I've killed in general, all that kind of stuff. Like, honestly, it's probably not as many as I think. Um, I have a lot of time in this game, but I also reset this account, so it's hard to say. I'm surprised I didn't die for mistiming that. We take those. <clears throat> On Scarn, do your interrupts. Thank you. Almost died again. Yeah, I wonder how many, uh, I mean, I guess with the trackers now, you can, you can keep track of that. How many behemoths you've killed. Uh, that wouldn't be a bad idea for me to do. I, I honestly haven't really touched the, outside of like when it launched and like when I came back and trying it. Uh, like a long time ago, I tried the, uh, the gauntlet game mode, but it was just kind of, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the gauntlet, honestly. It's good, and you know, I wouldn't say like get rid of it or anything, but for me personally, it just doesn't really. I don't think the next like layer of cells should be tied behind that personally, you know? Let everybody have all the new tools. But I get it, it gets people to like constantly log in and do all that stuff, but I don't know. Surely there's a better way than tying cells, like new content behind a time gate like that. It's not that large of a time gate, mind you, but still, I'd like to just play with the new stuff. The content that we get is so little as it is. Please just let me use the cells. Pretty sure I've finished a few uh, bounties. Yeah. I'll handle that after I kill this alien. Halfway through level 15 here as we approach the uh, Aether Surge here. It's got a level 18 Skarn in there, so that's going to be some decent EXP. Uh, we need staggers, broken parts, one in, uh, two interrupts, and to break some parts while they're enraged. Does that just break four parts of any behemoth? Well, okay. I wonder if Skarn's rocks count as a part break. Is this the best or the worst behemoth for this bounty? Okay, interrupt number one. Easy. Easy enough. Can I 
get it to enrage early enough. I don't want to like just keep leaning into it as I okay, interrupt number two. Easy. I don't want to break too many parts. It's half dead. It should be enraging it. Okay. I pressed discipline, but I got bamboozled. That's technically two breaks. Dang it. Yeah, okay, so the rocks do not count, which is yes. It's unlucky. So I have to break actual parts off of the behemoth. Good to know, to test that at least. I do this so frequently where it's like, oh yeah, it's an event. And then I kill the first behemoth and then I'm like, all right, I'm done. And then I run off, but sometimes the uh, minions come in fast enough to stop me. And I remember. <sighs> Let's see, what hell am I in for? Not a bad duo, honestly. So long as I'm paying attention. I feel like I dodge that, but, uh, you know. Yeah, no. Sometimes you just don't dodge properly, I guess. Dedge. One down, go for the other. I'm gonna get some more wounds here. I don't even think I need wounds at this point. I need breaks after they enrage. So I'm gonna wait. One break. I should go for the back leg, it's weaker. Yep. Alrighty, look at that. a nice chunk of experience honestly is that 700 exp or so do hands off we'll do pardon the interruption i feel like that was the same set of almost the same set of bounties back to back hey a box i'm gonna get that that valamir is still there time to cringe that thing, it destroyed me when I went for it. Level 16 already. We can probably head on over to... Um, I'll kill this and then head on over to the other hunting ground. The blaze works. I always forget what it's called. I always forget what the blaze works is called. Alrighty. Part of me wants to do a little bit of escalation, but I think I'll pass, honestly. Get to level 20 and then just start flying through it. Speaking of escalation, though, uh, heroic escalation is something that I need to start doing a lot more of just to get my EXP bank unlocked. Um, that's part of the Slayer's Path, and I need to get there eventually, but, um, yeah, I'm, it's gonna get to the point where the last thing I do on this account is just weekly heroic escalations, it seems, because I'm, it's five weeks for one crown, so that's, like, like, five, like, uh, six months or so, like, yeah, it's six months of heroic escalations to get every crown 
Um, I have a few of them, so it's not going to take me that long. But yeah, it's quite a bit of grind. Just logging in, doing the, ra the heroic escalation, and then... And then, uh... Logging out, essentially. At least until... Which, uh, honestly, kind of syncs up. Because, uh, you know, in summer, like, from summer, from now, I'm, we're six months away from the patch, or so. Maybe a little bit longer. I'm not necessarily sure when they're planning on launching that, but... Phoenix Labs is uh, not always punctual as well, so. That hits me? What the hell was that? I disagree, Phoenix Labs. Why the hell is that hitbox huge? For no reason. And for what? And for what? I actually have grown to enjoy the Blaze Works. I used to not really like it that much. But as I keep coming here, like pretty much every time afterwards, I've, I, it's like that. It's the right challenge, at least like at level 16. This is like how long Behemoth fights used to take. At least, you know, before all the math was kind of like figured out for the game. Like everything was very much so much more reliant on just staying alive rather than it was you know it was like a true um war of attrition you know it wasn't uncommon for the danger meter to be like absolutely maxed out you have nothing left you know as you're playing with a group of other slayers which i'm sure it's still like that for some groups but you're much more likely to run into someone who's absolutely overpowered than, uh, than it, you know, than that's much more likely now than it was back then when the game was just starting, obviously. So it was a little bit, a uh, little bit different there. Got him. Back in my day, we didn't have your fancy Omni cells and power creep. Sounding like a boomer, dude. It's unlucky. Dauntless boomer. Dude, I miss double EXP weekend already. <laughs> I miss it so much. It was so nice. Um. Hmm. Staggering genius is fine. Light him up is fine. And part, dude, how many pardon the interruptions am I gonna get? I feel like the last six have at least had one pardon the interruption on it. Like every, the last six bounty tokens that I've drafted for have all had pardon the interruption. It's like, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to tell me something? Are you saying that I'm a dog? I keep forgetting to put my... Uh, I've crafted like 500 Aether Drive Tonics and I keep forgetting to put them on my bar because I ran out when I was doing uh, this week's Heroic Escalation. I haven't really recorded my uh, Heroic Escalations because I just like... I start like sweating like I start like it's the only piece of content this thing's lost okay it's not lost anymore they figured it out but yeah um the content for like heroic heroic escalation just isn't very good for me because I just don't really talk I just play the game and sweat a little bit more pretty much the opposite of what you're watching right now and, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's something that people want to watch. <laughs> uh, I, I, well, it's more so, like, I just don't really know what I would, you know, like, where's, where's the enjoyment, right? Maybe people do enjoy that. Maybe people just want to watch 
you kill stuff. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to know if something's gonna be successful for this uh for this game. That thing got kinda messed up if I do say so myself. Mildly messed up. Did I finish anything? And I did not. See if I had um actually, you know what? I can remedy this. I'm gonna if I die a few more times, I'll throw down my box and then I can equip some Aether Drives, because that would help me with my actually I'll just do it now, because then I'll finish the bounty faster. Okay. It's locked? Wait a second. You can only bring seven with you on a hunt. No consumable equipped. Use a supply crate to change gear on a hunt. Wow. It's like I'm right next to one. Game. May I... Dude, what? the hell is happening let me leave the menus by hitting escape this is like the only game i know that won't let me i'm back out of menus when i press escape it works there it works there okay now it's working okay this is strange <laughs> ember made Got him. Give me the wound. Okay, that's wounded. Time to die. Time to die. Get back here. Uh, I wonder if I can actually... Okay, if it goes for another interrupt, I'm gonna try it. Damn it. Second shock rock there. I remember back in the day, the, uh, the wounds would, uh, go away if the part broke and it was so depressing. <laughs> You'd waste all this time getting a wound and then the part would break and then it would just go away and it didn't even give you like a damage buff or anything. It would just be like, all right, well, my sa my savagery is no longer active. It just made savagery so bad. Uh, however, on the hammer, you could wound things, but not break them because like back in uh, I think I mentioned before, like, ha certain certain things about Hammer, like, aren't the way that they are now. Like, they couldn't break tails and they couldn't break um, horns. And so you were able to wound the head of a, of a behemoth, like Quillshot, and uh, not have to worry about losing your savagery from breaking it. And so Wound Hammer was, like, actually pretty strong um back in the day for certain trials and certain hunts in general it's that quirky shit that makes this game like or it makes games like this like really cool and like fun and interesting but the uh, yeah everything and everything slowly got kind of like homogenized which in some games is good in some games is bad um you know, I, I think, like, a lot of the weapons lost their identity over time. But at the same time, they didn't have much identity to begin with, so it's like, is it really an L? You know? Like, most... There's not a lot of, uh... I tried, I tried, I really did. A lot of weapons just kind of devolve into, and like they, I mean, this happens in, in Monster Hunter as well, where just the weapons kind of just devolve into using the same move over and over again. 
but at least with like the special abilities it kind of like makes it a little bit more interesting but the more attacks that are available that have unique properties the more uh likely you are to have those moments where like oh hammer is suddenly really good on this particular fight and um yeah it's just you know when there's rules and limiters and mechanics involved suddenly you start having a lot more fun and it's a little bit more interesting at least Rest in peace, Wound Hammer. Even though I'm sure Wound Hammer is still probably pretty good because of, of the wound changes. It's some, somehow, some way, I'm sure it's like really good. I'd have to have to ask a Hammer player about that. Because that is not me. Level 17 here. Event's already active. Plenty of interrupts. Plenty of uh, slave four behemoths. Nah, we'll do in. Man. Hey, Fauna, dude. Despise Fauna, even. Despise Fauna. Discipline's active, which is good. Should be a fast kill. While waiting for the event to spawn. Spacing's pretty good there, not gonna get hit. And now I'll get a little bit closer. Easy peasy, honestly. Not quite enough part damage. We got Fenroar up, dude. Fenroar up for the event. It's gonna be not very fun, but uh, I'm I'm up to the challenge, honestly. Oh no! I pressed discipline, but it wasn't enough. I'm just like hoping it uses the uh... Is this common? Does it get stuck on terrain a lot? Hmm. This is fine. I like when it does this move because then it's just free. Free knockout damage. Free disciplines. Nice. I have no attack speed, bro. Zero attack speed. sure what happened there easy <clears throat> I learned that that interrupt is a slightly different in variance if it's gonna slam closed on you the wall is larger I uh, never really paid attention to both walls but uh, I recently learned that just by fighting this thing a lot because typically I just avoid it <laughs> Typically, I just avoid fighting this thing, but yeah, now I, now I know to be a little bit braver if the wall looks a little... Oh. If the wall looks a little small. And uh, try and get the the break, or not the break, but the, uh, the interrupt. Tempting to not get boys in here for free, at least. I'm gonna do this. Get out of the poison zones and... 
also get the shock. Now I can greet a little bit. I'm gonna hit this thing. I don't have discipline up. Unlucky. Give this some slurpage. Got a tormentor shard, whatever that's used for. Oh man, we got freaking Jurassic. Huge Savit UE though. Ow. <laughs> that uh, Savit UE was pumping. It was a good one. Easy. I think Jurassic back leg is like the weakest part of. Damn. I was hoping that I was like kind of well spaced or like spaced enough to not get hit there. But the thing is, is that Drask is like programmed to just always rotate. And so hitting this back leg, like look at that, right? It's always supposed to be like facing you or at least like in this position. So it doesn't really like al allow you in solo play to kind of capitalize on the weak parts. Which is one of the re one of the many reasons why I hate this behemoth. It also has a blind spot right there that you can just get stuck on. I'm so bad, dude. It's crazy. It's crazy. Watch this redemption, though. Easy. You would think I would use Savage Wellspring, but you would be greatly mistaken. Damn it. <laughs> Hate this move. Hate everything about this behemoth. Love Drask. Love the way it looks. Hate the way it fights. I don't get discipline there though, but I guarantee if I didn't use discipline there, I probably would have gotten hit. Ugh. Pain. Can I get this wound? <sighs> I feel like I'm, you know, started. I picked up my dodges a little bit at least. Man, so close. Give me the wound. Uh, I'm surprised I didn't dodge that. Legitimately. Not even maiming. Aw. There we go, that's good. Gonna right click until it dies. Spin to win. Easy. Got a bounty token for that. Start to be disappointed when you, uh, or like, start to be upset after you get a reward like that. I don't know. Bounty tokens are nice. The fact that you can get them, like, while you're grinding is nice. I do think that you should get, be able to get a little bit more, though. But at least from, you know, these final, uh, these final sort of, uh, events. You know, if you're killing like a danger version of of Shroud and the uh, in the one before this, the Twilight Highlands or where it's called, or you know, losing 75% of your life and then getting comboed into thorns, and then you know, if you're doing if you're dealing with that type of shit, you should uh, you know maybe maybe get a little bit more. Heck. 
at some point. I'm gonna do this. Pays off. Almost level 19. Dang it. Need a wound so I can get my attack speed up. There we go. Much better. Not bad, level 19. Help. Easy. That's unlucky that that happened right there, but that's what I get for going to uh, open my box, I guess. Go you know, hang out with my box for a little bit. One day I'll remember to use Savage Wellspring, dude. I swear. I promise. One day. One day it will happen. Today is not that day. Okay, this is awful. Actually, never mind. It's amazing. I love it here. I swear that it's... <laughs> I was going to say, I swear the explosion time is not always the same, but I think uh, that's just huge cope. I think it is the same. I remembered. There we go. High five. Okay. Hell yeah. Nailed it. Uh, we're almost... Let's see. I almost got about... Let's see. 450. About 700 in the pipe. If I get three more interrupts. Uh, I'll need to kill maybe two more behemoths. Depending on which ones I do. The Charog seems to be pretty easy for the Warp Pike. So I think I'll go do that. Uh, actually, I'll just do Karabek first. And try and get some interrupts there. If I can get interrupts, then I might not even need to. It's worth it. I'm gonna say worth. I need enraged. I need an enraged interrupts though. That's another thing I noticed is that Savage Wellspring when you have attack speed versus when you don't have attack speed, it feels very slow when you don't. No, dude. But? But wait. Oh my gosh, I almost got sniped from down here. Hey, look, a box. Alright, it's enraged. Let's see if I can get some interrupts.
Nice, there's one. We'll probably just get the kill here. Let's see if it, before it dies, if it will do, uh, yep, nice. Does that count? It does, let's go. That was a lot. That was like 950. Oh, that was enough. Hell yeah. Let's go. <laughs> that must have been like, yeah, I have three EXP over. That's so funny. I've, I, that was like just enough. Perfect. Love that. Love when a plan just comes together there at the end. Hell yeah. All right. Well, we finish it at what cost to my sanity? I have no idea. But uh, we're on our way. I love that getting back to Ramsgate just takes like no, almost no time at all. Um, I don't know what it is about the Ramsgate servers, but getting back is always easy. Easier than finding a hunting ground. And we're, uh, we're done. We're level 10. Hell yeah. Let's go over here. Let's unlock it. Ooh, that feels good. And then we got one more heroic merit that should be coming up, actually. Let me, uh, I want to go ahead and go into that menu. Can I please control my character? Uh, heroic escalation. It rolls over in roughly two days. So I'll be able to do that. That'll be a lot of fun. I need to figure out what weapon I'm going to do it with, but uh, that'll be fun. So that's going to do it for this video, y'all. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. It's been quite a long time. Uh, the double EXP weekend, <laughs> I got spoiled for sure. But we're done with the Warp Pike, and now we're moving on to the Hammer, which is up next. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.